You must heed my words before I'm gone, my son. Now, you will be king. But the throne must pass to a male heir. Hakim, it appears you have a son. He must be found. Prepare the royal jet. We are going back to America. Oh, hell no, your majesty. Come on! I'm back! Say it again! Feel right in this mother... Feel good in this mother... My whole hood in this mother... Come on! Come on! Just in the middle. I'm the king of this shop. That money hell! Well, well. Say it again. It is so good to see you. Well, I be damned. Look who done come up in here. Hey, it's Kunta Kinte and Ebola. The famine and blood diamond. Nelson Mandela and Winnie. Those hungry babies with the flies on the face. Hey, oh, 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 that's too much. Now, you stepped over the line. Now, we won't be talking that kind of shit about the hungry babies. You're going to have to get out of my chair. Politically incorrect. So what you doing back here, Hotel Rwanda? <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Say it again. So let's talk about um, one new career. I understand you stayed a little bit in uh, Silarion for a couple of years and um, you went back to the States and all that. What do you make of Africa? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question, please? I couldn't hear you clearly. Okay, I'll go again. I understand that you stayed oh, in. Okay. Okay, is that better? Yes. Would you say, what did I think of my trip? Okay, let me ask the question again. Question? I understand that you stayed in Slarion for a couple of um, years, and then you went back to, to Europe. And in that regard, I want to know, what do you make of Africa? I had a wonderful visit there, and that was my introduction to Liberia. And in fact, to the continent, mm. what had happened was I was doing a special that we had created called Grambling Takes It All Back Home. And that was when the Grambling College Marching Band was invited to the inauguration mm. of then President Talbert. And it was educational and inspirational. And it gave me a lot of authentic research material for the role that was to be presented to me later in the role of Kunta Kinte in the uh, epic miniseries Roots. Mm. All right, now, um, that brings us to the conversation coming to America. Um, I want to say it was a, a great piece how you guys um, joined the different storylines, and it, it's more now of a series of sort. But... Uh, how relevant do you think coming to America was for the black community um, in 1988 when it came out? Well, it was extremely well received. Mm. The costumes, the storyline itself was a typical Hollywood storyline, but it went so well only primarily because of the writing and Eddie Murphy's performance as, mm -hmm. as the prince. So I think that the sequel will be equally well received. Only time will tell, but all the points that the audience seemed to love are in the sequel. So I'm looking for it to be just as successful, if not more so. Mm. All right, now that takes me to a very other question. Is that why was it important for them to have a squill 31 years later? After 31 years, we bounce back. Why? I'm not sure I understood the question. John, I want yes, to know. I'm here. I'm not sure. Okay, let me I'm ask not again. I'm sure I understood the question. Let me ask again, Please. John. 31 years later, yes. you come back with uh, Coming to America 2. Why? Yes. Well, the public has been curious 
as to where the sequel was because they loved the original so much. They've mm. been waiting for it and anticipating it for quite a number of years, and it's only been the last couple of years that it became a reality mm. and people began to look forward to this date. So mm. it's been greatly anticipated, and I'm sure it'll be greatly appreciated. Okay. In the movie, um, the, the, the latest um, release of uh, Coming to America 2, I see a couple of animals in the bucket of the pallies, uh, you know, uh, people walking around with a lot of animals that side. In the 21st century and in 2021, isn't the movie contributing to the general narrative that Africa is a jungle? No, I think that because of the scope of the film, and if you're referring to the animals that were walking around the palace mm. or what was supposed to be uh, the king's palace, uh, I think that was just a liberty that, that Hollywood took to enhance the film and to uh, maybe suggest that there, they, he had his own private stock of animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they meant anything derogatory by it. On the contrary, I think they showed the beauty of the animals mm. and maybe a greater, pre greater appreciation for the animal, the wildlife there. But these were all pets that belonged to the king, so they would be excluded from the normal animal populace. Okay. Now, John, there is a, a trend in Hollywood where African stories are being amplified on a daily. The black storylines are being amplified. What is pushing this? Who is pushing the agenda? I think the agenda comes from those writers that have taken the responsibility or taken on the, the, uh, the challenge of accurately depicting life in Africa, at least in that part of Africa. Uh, so I guess the responsibility for authenticity would lie with the producers and the writers who are producing the, the, uh, the projects that we see on the screen and on the TV screen, of course. Mm -hmm. Because back in the day, I remember they were very, very um, stereotypical in terms of their negativity. They portrayed Africans as, as the usual uh, stereotypes, as being backwards and savage, etc. Et and in my visits, in my in my stays in Liberia, and I even got to go to um, different parts, Sierra Leone, and various other parts of the continent. Uh, I found it to be the exact contrary. Mm. I enjoyed the years that I lived in Africa. And uh, I, would, I would love to return, particularly after the sequel comes out, just to see what the reaction of the indigenous people is to the film. Mm. Okay, um, given your clothes in the industry, in the movie world, what best can African actors, actresses, writers, producers do to break the divide? I think having more American actors involved in their projects and they in turn being involved in more, more, more so, more, more African actors from all over the continent coming to America, mm. if you pardon the pun, coming to the United States to work in the Hollywood film industry. And I think that would create a, a bond of sorts. And I'd like to see that happen. I would love to go back to work in some African projects and be directed by some African directors. Uh, I think it would enhance my career and give me a greater understanding as to how they go about the process mm -hmm. of storytelling. And it would certainly add uh, authenticity to it as far as I'm concerned. So I would look forward to that. Okay. Um, now let's look at your career. Um, as someone. As, as, as someone who has been in the industry for quite long and uh, very experienced, what are you proud of with regards to your career? I'm sorry, what was the last part of the question? What are you proud of in your career as an actor, as well as a writer and a producer? Did you understand? John? Uh, yes. yes, sir, I'm here. I still did not 
clearly understand the last part of your question. I heard the words actor, producer, but I'm not sure I understood the first part of your question. So. Okay, let me repeat the question. What are you proud of in your career as an actor, producer, and writer? What, what have I found? Yeah. What are you proud of? What have you achieved and you're proud of it? I guess the fact that there was a universal positive response to the motion picture, but I would really like to go back to work on something of a dramatic nature as well, because that would give me uh, confidence and that would give me the experience of working with the African directors and, and script writers on, on a project that would have more substance mm. than uh, the, the comedy. People need to laugh. I recognize that, and I'd, I'd love to be part of projects that do, in fact, provide people with the comedy they want so bad uh -huh. and the humor. But by the same token, there are some serious subject matters that, I've, that are evolving on the <coughs> continent, and I would love to be part of those stories when they are told, mm. if I'm still in the business. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this could be my second last question, John. Um, the youth are very um, robust, they are excited, they have a lot of talent. What should the youth do so as to break through, especially from Africa? I think they should rely on their own storytelling abilities because they've got a wealth of stories to tell, oh, yeah. stories that everybody can identify with, not just because they have an African origin. Mm. But human stories, stories of overcoming obstacles and overcoming challenges mm. that are confronted by all peoples everywhere, particularly in this time of the pandemic. Um, I would like to know from, from the African writers and producers and directors and mm. the African talent, I would like to, if you could facilitate an exchange between myself and some of those people who really tell the stories, write the stories, and act them out. I would love to establish a relationship with those African mm. uh, creative people so that we could begin an exchange and I could hear from them firsthand what stories they would like to tell and to see if I can be of help in any way mm. other than just acting on screen. Um, I have a production company. My son is a filmmaker and a producer, and we work together on a number of projects, we would both be very receptive to the idea, mm. he and I, his name is K.C. Amos, mm. of coming to various parts and journeying to various parts of the continent mm. to capture those stories that they feel must be told and would be well received. I look forward to a relationship mm. uh, where we could combine our talents and collaborate on so many, many stories, wonderful stories. I look forward to that happening. All right, John. It was great talking to you. So after project of uh, um, coming to America, what next? Are you taking a vacation? Yeah, well, I will be working for, uh, on, some in, on some projects on a smart, much smaller scale. But I will be taking a vacation, a much-needed vacation, in approximately a month. Okay. And I, I hope to go somewhere warm. Uh, I'm in Colorado right now where I've been living for the last two years, and I love the state. But it, the cold weather is coming. We anticipate snow tomorrow night mm. and for the next three days. So I would like to go to the islands. My son and I have talked about going to the islands. We love Jamaica. And we love different parts of the island, so I will be taking that much-needed vacation. Thank you very much. Okay, John, when you find time, find time and visit Uganda. Believe you me, you will be blown away. I'm sure I will. Rest assured, the first time I get an extended break, yep. I'm making arrangements to visit you and so many of my other friends on the continent. I hope you take care, stay safe, and stay well. I will. Stay safe and stay well as well. It was great talking to you. Have a lovely afternoon.
Thank you. You as well, sir. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. That is uh, John Amos, a great writer and an actor of um, The Coming to America. And the bigger conversation goes in. One thing that is very clear, he says, we should tell our storylines as Africans. We tell our own stories. We need our own stories. And then we can be in position to break even and break the divide. Morning Again TV continues. I'll be back shortly.